Hello everyone, welcome to another anatomy video and today I'll be going over the names and classifications of the joints in the superior limb. Starting in the pectoral girdle, we see a joint formed here. It's between the clavicle and the sternum. This joint is called the sternoclavicular joint. If we remember from the last video, this joint has an articular disc. And the classification of this joint is it's a planar joint. Which is one of the seven subtypes of a synovial joint. Moving on to the other joints of the superior limb, we can go ahead and see another joint formed with the clavicle in the acromion of the scapula. This joint is called the acromial clavicular joint. It has an articular disc and its classification is a planar joint. Just inferior to it, we see the shoulder joint. It can also be called the humeral joint, as well as the glenohumeral joint. Gleno referring to the glenoid cavity of the scapula. This joint doesn't have an articular disc, but its classification is a ball and socket joint. If we work our way down inferiorly, we see that our next joint on the superior limb, and it being the elbow joint. Also known as the cubital joint. Now the elbow joint may look simple, but in reality it's quite complex. The elbow joint is a composite joint, meaning it involves more than two bony structures. Because of this, we actually have three joints found within the elbow joint. So if we go ahead and remove this connective tissue, we can see three joints being formed here. The first one I want to discuss is the joint between the, the radius and the humerus. This joint right here is called the humeral radial joint. And the classification for this joint is ball and socket. Now you might be wondering why is it ball and socket joint? Well if we remember at the head of the radius it articulates with the capitulum of the humeral condyle. The capitulum is very round and almost looks like a ball or a small head. Because of this, it's classified as a ball and socket joint. Right alongside the humeral radial joint, we have the humeral ulnar joint. The classification for this joint is a hinge joint. And finally, the third joint being formed here in the elbow joint is the proximal radial ulnar joint, located right here between the radius and the ulna, like the name suggests. Again, this is called the proximal radial ulnar joint. Its classification is trochoid joint. also known as pivot joint. Now if we just go distal from the elbow joint, we'll see our first non-synovial joint in the superior limb. And this is going to be called the radial ulnar syndesmosis. And I'll go ahead and identify that right here. If we remember the characteristics of a syndesmosis, we'll remember that a syndesmosis is characterized by a large amount of connective tissue proper between the joints. And we can see here this long, thin sheet of connective tissue between these two bones. Again, this joint is called radio ulnar 
syndesmosis. Its classification is syndesmosis. It's nice because the classification is in the name of the joint. Now because the radio ulnar syndesmosis is unique because it has a long sheet of connective tissue proper holding the two bony structures together, this structure itself has its own name. This joint component right here is called the antibrachial interosseous membrane. Again, this antibrachial interosseous membrane is the name of this sheet right here. It's not the name of the joint. This is merely the name of the structure that helps form the joint. So if I was asked to identify this joint, the name of the joint is the radio ulnar syndesmosis. If I was asked to classify this joint, it would be syndesmosis. If I was asked to name this joint component or this joint structure, it would be the antibrachial interosseous membrane. Again, antibrachial interosseous membrane is not a joint or its name. It's merely the name of the structure of the joint. Now we can go ahead and move on even more distal. At the distal most end between the radius and the ulna, we have another joint formed here. The name of this joint is the distal radial ulnar joint. Since we have a proximal radial ulnar joint, it suggests that there's a distal radial ulnar joint, and that's the case in this situation. The classification for this joint is trochoid joint. Again, that means pivot joint, if we want it in English. Trochoid is just the Latin. Now we can go ahead and move on to the joints found in the carpal region. The first one being the radial carpal joint, found here. It's sometimes called the wrist joint. The classification for this joint is a condylar joint. Now the joints found between all the carpal bones share a common name. All the joints found here between these carpal bones and these carpal bones and these carpal bones, they all have the same name and they are intercarpal joints. Inter meaning between carpal referring to the carpal bones. So these are the joints between the carpal bones. So it's called intercarpal joints. The classification for these joints are planar joints. Now out of all the carpal bones there's only one carpal bone that has a joint name and it's very specific to itself and that's going to be the joint of the pisiform bone, shown here. Here's the pisiform bone or the pisiform bone and it articulates with the triquetral bone. Again, this is called joint of the pisiform bone. Its classification is also planar. Now I mentioned before, all the joints found between the carpal bones are called intercarpal joints. However, there is another joint found between the intercarpal joints. If we separate the carpal bones by the distal row and the proximal row, like I'm drawing right here in purple, this right here forms a joint called the middle carpal joint. And again, it's the collection of intercarpal joints formed by the distal and proximal row. And of course, it's a planar joint. And those are all the joints found within the carpal region. Now we can go ahead and move into the joints found in the metacarpus. The first set of joints that involve the metacarpal bones are actually between the carpal bones and the metacarpal bones. And these are going to be called carpometacarpal joints.
and the classification for these joints are conular joints. Out of all of the carpal metacarpal joints, there's one that actually has a name, and it's this one right here. This is the carpal metacarpal joint of the thumb. And its classification is a saddle joint. Just like the carpal bones had joints found between them, the metacarpal bones also have joints formed between them. Located here, located here, located here, and this one as well. These are going to be called intermetacarpal joints. And its classification is going to be planar, just like the carpal joints were. If we keep moving our way distally, we'll find ourselves having a joint formed between the metacarpal bones and the proximal phalanges of the hand. These joints are called metacarpal phalangeal joints. And the classification for these joints are condylar. If we keep working our way now distally, we'll find that we have two sets of joints that are between phalanges. So if we follow the pattern, we've had intercarpal joints and we've, ha we've had intermetacarpal joints as well. But here we have two joints and they're both articulating with phalanges. So it wouldn't make sense to call them interphalangeal joints because we wouldn't know which one we're referring to. Because of that, we have this row being called the proximal interphalangeal joints, and this row up here called the distal interphalangeal joints. And the classification for both of these sets of joints are hinge joints. Now, you may be wondering, why didn't I color in the interphalangeal joint of the first digit? The reason why I didn't highlight the interphalangeal joint of the thumb, because there's no middle phalanx. And because there's no middle phalanx located in the first digit, there can't be a proximal or distal interphalangeal joint. Because of this, this joint is only called the interphalangeal joint of the thumb. And like the rest of them, it's going to be a hinge joint. And those are all the different types of joints located in the superior limb, along with their classifications. I hope this video was helpful and that it's going to help you guys study for your future quizzes and exams. Take care.